and welcome to our first installment on practical uses of geology. Now the first core concept we're going to go over is mineralogy. I'm not going to go into great great detail. This isn't a mineralogy class, it's not a 200 level class, so I'm just going to give you a basic understanding of what a mineral is. So what is a mineral? Well a mineral is an inorganic substance that forms crystals bound by planar surfaces. That's a simple in a nutshell, in a bag, description of a mineral. Um, there are some organic minerals in the past 10 years or so people have started to add some of those to the list, but generally they're inorganic and they're found naturally, but they can be man-made as well. Now, minerals are the basic building blocks of rocks. Every rock you see laying out on the ground, every bit of dirt you see, all that is all made of minerals. Okay, perhaps the most common mineral on the Earth's surface is a mineral called quartz. Chemically, quartz is SiO2, silicon and oxygen. Simple chemical formula, yet almost all rocks on the Earth's surface contain at least some of this. Now, quartz when it forms crystals, it forms these beautiful hexagonal crystals. And what a hexagonal crystal is one of the six main crystal systems. We're not going to go through them, but since it's common, I'm going to address it here. When you look down at it, you see one, two, three, four, five, six sides. And they form points. Now these crystals naturally form like this. This is not carving and this is not man work. Quartz crystals, if allowed to grow, will form crystals just like this. Now, most commonly quartz makes up what we call sand. Most sands, other than glacial sands, are made up largely of quartz. And quartz is a basic mineral in the makeup of the surface of the earth. And all rocks are made up of minerals, either one or more. That quartz crystal I showed you is a crystal of quartz, it's a mineral, but if I were to glue two of these together with heat and pressure, either naturally or artificially, I have a rock. That's all a rock is, is it's a combination of one or more minerals. Uh, rocks also can be man-made, technically concrete is a rock. But all the rocks you see around you are made of minerals, except for some organic ones such as coal. Um, the table salt that you put on your food is made of halite, which is a sodium chloride and forms what we call isometric or cubic crystals. And if you look at one closely and put one under fine glass, you'll see that it's made up of small cubic crystals. That's a very common one that we all use, and that forms naturally in layers of rock and in this, on the sea floor. Um, so you're starting to see that this does have some practical use. Quartz is the main component of sand, which is the main component of glass. So this isn't just purely academic. We're already starting to see how under the understanding of these things is key to uh, practical uses. Before I move on to some more common minerals, I want to address quartz a little more. Um, most people are familiar with amethyst, smoky quartz, and rose quartz. Those are all SiO2, and they're all just qu colored quartz. What well, colors it are little amounts of impurities, very trace amounts, but it's enough to affect the color. But it's all SiO2, and it all forms these hexagonal crystals. Right here, I have a tray made of amethyst. These crystals are a lot smaller and they usually are, um, but this tray has been carved out of purple quartz or amethyst. Another very common mineral at the surface of the earth is calcite. Chemically, calcite is CaCO3. So it's calcium, carbon, and oxygen. Oxygen 
is bound to many, many rocks. When we think of oxygen, we think of free-floating oxygen in the air, but actually, if it wasn't for oxygen, the vast majority of the rocks around us would not exist. So it's key in many, many rocks. Right here, I have a piece of calcite, well, actually a bunch of calcite crystals. This is actually from Wisconsin. These crystals were mined, and they're a little gray. Calcite, like quartz, comes in a wide variety of colors, ranging from clear to almost black. Um, usually, it's white or yellowish, but you have beautiful blue and orange and green calcites as well. And if you look at these crystals, they form points similar to what the quartz did. And calcite, like quartz, is hexagonal. It doesn't form the exact same crystals, but close. And there's a different version of calcite, still hexagonal calcite, but it looks more like a cube that someone has taken and kind of pushed on it so it looks more like that. That's rough. That's not, that's not perfect. That's a different crystal system altogether. But basically it looks like somebody took it and just pushed the, uh, the block. That is called a rhombohedral form of calcite. And that's the one that gives calcite some nifty properties. Like if you take a clear piece of calcite that's rhombohedral and put it on a piece of paper with writing on it, it'll actually refract and you'll get double writing. That's a way to identify calcite. Another key way is to throw a little bit of very dilute hydrochloric acid on it and it'll fizz a little bit. Quartz won't do that. Quartz is very durable, long-lasting stuff. Now, another mineral I want to show you just because it's interesting. It's common. Uh, but not overly common. It does make up, it's, second, it's a secondary mineral on a lot of rocks. It forms little black specks and it's not as pronounced. It's called a secondary mineral. Um, it's called pyrite. Pyrite is chemically iron sulfide. You got iron and sulfur. It's one of the minerals that contains no oxygen. Now pyrite is also known as false gold. And when it forms large crystals, it forms isometric or cubic crystal systems. Now I'm going to show you a beautiful piece of pyrite, natural pyrite, from Peru. You look at this, and I just told you it forms cubic crystals, but you're like, why does it look like two pyramids glued on top of each other? That's not cubical. It is. Um, systems, these are different planar surfaces. But, in an isometric crystal system, you have your basic construct, which is something that would fit into a cube. And all an isometric crystal is, is you have three axes. A, B, and C. And they're all eight, the axes that make up this crystal fit, this crystal as a whole, are all the same length. A is equal to B is equal to C. That's the definition of isometric. Sometimes it forms cubes. And pyrite will form cubes. Sometimes it forms the pyrite, like I have from Peru, which looks basically... like two pyramids glued to each other. But here's my axes, A, B, and C. And as long as A is equal to B is equal to C, it's isometric. Okay, what I really want you to get out of this first uh, segment of practical uses of geology, mineralogy, is that all rocks are made of minerals and the earth is made of rocks. So in order to understand how the earth works, we need to have a solid understanding of mineralogy. So that concludes the first segment and our next segment, stratigraphy.
And what stratigraphy is, is the understanding of how rocks and minerals out in the physical world relate to each other.